Welcome back, everybody, to more We Play Dota 2 action. We've got our last match of today on Beyond the Summit. I'm Gods. Joining me for We Play Dota 2 has been Vikramond. I hope you guys have been enjoying. We also had the G1 leak earlier today where we saw Rattlesnake, unfortunately, get knocked out of the competition by LGD China, who advanced to the online portion of the playoffs. But we're here in the We Play Dota 2 League, sponsored by Logitech G Series, Western Digital, and Inno3D. With our final match, EG win the group. Unfortunately for Team Dust, they get knocked out in the fourth position. But second and third is up for grabs. I ticked up against Oroxen. Vic, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who takes Who takes this game? I got to say, after that, just comparing their performance against the EG wall, you have to give Orox the advantage here. And I like also, again, I talk about how if you have one day and you're facing a bunch of matches in a row, I think you should change things up as little as possible. It's not likely that people will scout you out that heavily or that people will just like counter you, especially if you're a relatively unknown team. So stick with what you know. And I think that's what they're doing. You see the Shadow Demon reprised and the mid Magnus. And so I think just the fact that Tony Montana has been playing this Magnus all day means that he's more and more likely to get sort of get the things that he needs yeah they lost last game but his magnus was was pretty solid i i definitely don't fault them for going with it again the dark sea does get snagged by arctic with the first two picks so they, they're probably mm -hmm. keeping an eye on that last game deciding they don't want to give that away the real power in the dark sir is if he's in a 1v1 matchup he does great and if he's against a trial you can just go straight to the jungle and you don't have to mm -hmm. worry about going up against the trial lane so he's a very versatile off lane here in that sense so i like I like the fact Arctic do take him up and don't let Dubas draft both, Ma both Mag and Darkseer. Absolutely. I don't think, I think Arctic having a great draft so far, it's actually very, very effective in, in the sort of the, the tactics that they've been using. Getting that Rubik against Magnus, obviously very good. Uh, Mystico, there's one of their support players, who I think is also their captain. Uh, he is pretty good on Rubik. I've seen him have excellent games where he just manages to score that blink and really do a lot. And if Rubik gets blink against Magnus, it's actually, uh, it tilts in Rubik's favor very quickly because he can always steal that RP or it becomes much easier to steal that RP and not get caught in it. And so uh, depending on the upside potential of the supports, I feel like if Mystico has an amazing game, Arctic could upset Orox here. And uh, they're definitely also a team that I've seen high highs and low lows for them. Maybe that last game we saw was kind of a low against TG, but uh, this game, they have a shot. It'll be interesting to see how these teams fill out their fourth and fifth. I really think Orox will just go for the most solid lineup they possibly can. And maybe even something to... If they play something like an aggressive trialing with Shadow Demon Gyrocopter X, they could score some serious early kills, because that's a dangerous combo. And Gyrocopter can go into that support role, although being a cis team, I imagine they are going to be playing it as that sort of carry, sort of something that NT8 started with Aki playing a support mm -hmm. Gyrocopter, but more likely than not, it is going to be sort of a carry farming Gyrocopter, but we'll have to wait and see. Definitely potential for it to be sort of put in a different, different role. As far as carries go for the Arctic team, they've got themselves, well, a solo mid and Batrider, the offlaner and Darks here. We can see Batrider go in the jungle as we saw Fear run it, but it does sort of lead towards them. Who's going to be their carry? What hero is that going to be in? I think the biggest one left in the pool is maybe the Luna, unless they want to risk an anti-mage here. Hmm. Uh, one quite interesting thing. Do you think they'll run Magnus mid and Quap solo safe? Ooh. I... Definitely a possibility if they want to go offensive trial in here with the gyrocopter, like you mentioned, and they can get a really strong trial and get something either like well, Lena being the, the probably the best choice to go with the Shadow Demon, and then you have Shadow Demon, Lena, gyrocopter, Queen of Pain goes safe lane. Who does? I think Queen of Pain is one of the few heroes who can sort of edge out Darkseer slightly, depending on how you play it. So sure. maybe we see that. But you can definitely get an advantage. I mean, you do. You're not scared of that uh, that Ion Shell at all. And you can just harass Darkseer whenever he actually comes up to try to get XP. So we do see the Luna. Good call there. Uh, it does come out on Arctic. Luna's a hero that both of these teams play, I think, a little more statistically speaking than the average team does or the average pro team. But Arctic looking to really fight out his five. I mean, the Batrider and Luna really signifies their intent to, to chase Aurox around the map. And I'd be careful if I were Aurox. I don't know if I would go for something like Gyro support and a big hard carry. I think their lineup is solid enough already with the Gyrocopter as number one that... For me, I would like to see something like a, a good support pair for Shadow Demon, even if it's Lena or something, and they want to just fight first fight. Yeah, the Lunar Dark is kind of the makings of that Death Ball army, where you just have this really strong, hard to beat, uh, just group of heroes. With a Mag, you can always sort of contest that, but then there's also a Rubik on the playing field, so there, there's potential for both teams to make some plays, take a team fight, and I think that's something which Arctic just want to keep on going with with their last pick. They don't want to suddenly say, "Oh, let's go for a PL." 
uh, or let's go for an anti mage. I think that that's just not going to work out for them at, at all. Uh, as for well, Aurox, I don't think they want to go for an aggressive hard carry themselves. I mean, the PL anti mage just is not going to fit in whatsoever. No. With with their style of play and with the fact they've got Mag Queen of Pain already there, I think Gyrocopter does make a nice also of semi carry option. And hey, late game Divine Rape to Gyrocopter, no problem. <laughs> no slouch, definitely. They're taking a little time to decide it out. I wonder if there's any meaning gods to be gleaned from the fact that Sigma actually has a Queen of Pain ability as his avatar. Could we be seeing him actually uh, take most of the farm up as Ooh. that Queen of Pain, and then the Gyro just doing a semi carry? Yeah, definitely a possibility with. with Tony Montana's just played two games of mag. Even if it's a side lane mag, I'd still expect him to be on the mag, not CA. Yeah. CA's been playing the off lane darks here, but side lane mag, Tony Montana's been in pretty good form, and it's a Brewmaster last pick, so... Huh. Uh, what? I guess support Gyrocopter. Uh, support Gyro and a Vost-style Vos carry Brewmaster? Or a solo mid Brewmaster? I, we'll, we'll have but to then see. where does the Magnus I, go? Yeah, I, I guess who's in the trial lane? Who's in the <laughs> trial lane is the question. You can put Queen of Pain in the trial lane, but you want Queen of Pain getting levels. Same for I Mag, think... and I guess one option is doing sort of a semi jungle Mag, but I think more likely we see, mm -hmm. like you say, the Havos style trial lane farming Brewmaster. It's CA who's the off laner on Brewmaster, yeah. oh. and it's like you say, Sima on yeah, Queen, Sima of Pain. That Queen of Pain. Okay. Interesting. Support they, gyro though, so definitely a support yeah. gyro. So we're not going to be seeing a support mag. It will be some kind of a tri lane with Shadow Demon Gyrocopter. The question is, yeah. who's the third? Very mysterious, honestly. They do have a lot of they have a lot of laning options. I mean, they can do the safe lane host farm brewmaster with the hard lane Magnus or something. But no, I mean, it will be Tony Montana up on him. This makes perfect sense to me. I mean, like I said, he's been playing. No, okay, I was right. It is the hard. I'm confused by CA, the choice of Brewmaster as the carry in this lane. That's the only thing I'm, I'm a little yeah. bit confused about. Not that they can't get the kills, just that I don't know it's that it's the number one best option. I guess Drunken Haze, I guess most of Brewmaster's abilities are no joke against Luna. If she's trying to go hard carry and glaive you down to death, the fact that he can slow down her attack speed so much and disable her with the micro brews is significant. I just don't know about the laning. You're pretty tanky and hard, hard to kill, I guess, but you actually to get in there. For Claps is not always going to be easy. You have got a setup from a Shadow Demon Disruption, but at the same time, there's a Rubik Telekinesis, there's a Bane Nightmare, there's a lot of right. counter initiation over on the Dire side. Yeah, the the nice thing about the Brewmaster pick, I guess, is that Bane. Well, no, if he gets the initiate, if he gets the jump on you, and you fiends grip the Brewmaster before he ults, then you're in really bad shape. But if you can actually ultimate, Bane has really nothing to do to you. Like, and Feeble doesn't matter. None of Bane's abilities matter against the once he's actually in micro brew form. Yeah, and it's you can actually, if you've got some insane select style micro, you can use your Panda and Brewmaster dispel to get rid of Enfeeble <laughs> on your teammates. <laughs> True. I want to say you can dispel it. I'd be surprised if you couldn't. It's like a negative effect that you should be able to dispel. So you, you should be able to dispel Enfeeble as well as Nightmare, I think. I don't so know. So Manta, Manta removes it. I know BKB doesn't. But if Manta removes it, I don't see why uh, yeah. Brewmaster uh, dispel wouldn't. Okay. Well, that's like going back to know. like Warcraft 3. Yeah, micro. this is... <laughs> no one, it's one spell that no one in... And Dota really uses as like yeah. a dispel. They'll, they'll use it only to get rid of their own Cyclone. When they want their Cyclone in, they're okay, okay, I'll use Dispel. But it's never like to counter other stuff. You can actually use it on Guardian Angel and Repel, I believe. I'm 90% sure on that. It's a, it's, yes. a cool little, yes. it's a cool little implementation. Back when Omni was a big pick, I remember this Brewmaster game where they just Ooh. completely countered it using... Uh, a Brewmaster Ultimate Dispel. Uh, unfortunately, the smoke is, compl I think, will probably be wasted from Orox yeah. unless Arctic mess up, because they completely saw the initiation of the smoke, just completely. So, I don't know. Interesting that Arctic are putting so many resources in the middle. I think they've been watching the games, and they know that if Tony Montana has a good game, Ooh. Orox have a big advantage. Mihawk going to walk right into this. He's going to uh -oh. go with a Rocket Prize first, and there's no... He has Surge, though. No, he, well, he hasn't leveled anything yet, so he could get Surge. Because he doesn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> He has it. I, I sorry. I guess I meant his his potentiation yeah. rather than the actualization. If Shadow Demon gets his disruption, though, I think he maybe dies. Cause sure, you can level up Surge afterwards, but that has a casting time. And the second Rocket Barrage, I think, maybe would have killed him. That was that was close still. I would have liked to see him level that Surge as soon as the Rocket Barrage yeah. started going. Yeah. 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 Oh well, the the tri lane will rotate top, so we will be seeing that tri lane farming. Brewmaster. I think they're quite happy with Queen of Pain's ability to just uh -oh. lane against this. Ru well, Rubik, Actually, or? this is no joke. Oh man. Nightmare. 
If they get the disruption. disruption. There will be a clap. Rocket Barrage is going to be coming in, but it's going to be a bit late, and he's passed. He took the Nightmare. There's mm. no clap just yet. Ooh. I would have really, really liked to see Tossy disrupt the Luna and then take... Why not take Nightmare onto himself immediately? What yeah. else is the Shadow Demon going to do besides that disruption? He took the Nightmare eventually, but it was slightly it was delayed. Slow. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunate, but uh, we will be seeing... Offlane Rubik, this is really weird. <laughs> I'm... Like, this is uh, great for Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain's gonna yeah. be so happy. I mean, back in the day, Rubik was yeah. one of the mids. But there's a reason he's not one of the mids anymore. He got nerfed. He, the movement speed, the fade bolt damage. He was not one of the off lanes, unfortunately. Well, I no. guess De Demon, who I saw in the chat a bit earlier, was one of the players who would run him on off lane occasionally. Mm -hmm. ROTK on DK would occasionally do it, but mm -hmm. they wouldn't actually really go to the off lane. They'd sort of more look, put, put pressure on mid lane, put pressure on the trial lane. They wouldn't actually go like suicide Rubik. Another right. engagement. Oh, big top engagement top. Ooh, Rubik's actually TP'd in for this one. So Dubas in all sorts of trouble. He gets first blooded by the Rubik here. And Rubik looking for some more. Darks is coming as well. They're going to try to bring down CA. Drops a Clappy, but he's actually taking a lot of damage. Arctic. This is the good kind of stuff. And Shadow Demon could be in trouble as well. There's a Surge Luna here on the chase. And Tossi. Is there any lockdown? Is there a nightmare? Anything? No mana on any of these heroes apart from Rubik, who is not in range, even with these boots. And I like this rotation. This is kind of how. Demon would sometimes play the offlane Rubik, or ROTK for DK would do it. They would go gank the trial lane. If there's a trial lane versus trial lane, they'd gank it. Ooh. That. I didn't realize they actually had a complete trade off in the middle. I missed that too. I'm sorry. I, yeah, we, I probably shouldn't have. There's health bars at the top, which I can just glance up and like check and be like, oh, hey, look, these heroes are low HP. But... <laughs> no, that's on me. It's, I, I should have been watching it. It's uh, early. It's past, <laughs> it's past midday. Holy crap. I think both of us have been casting for. You're, you're also in US West? Yeah, uh, US Central. Okay. So I've been up since about 4 a.m. this morning, and now it's 2 p.m. Yeah, well, I think the trade-off here is really good for Oryx, though, because of yeah. how farmed and how much levels Queen of Pain's getting. Mm -hmm. They can say, hey, look, we're down a couple kills, but look at our Queen of Pain. Complete free farm, and all Queen of Pain has to do is hit level 7, level 8, pick up a TP scroll, Magnus and go, go to these farms. Uh, actually, it depends on if he wants to dive. No, never mind. Smash doesn't want to dive. Uh, I mean, nobody could call this trial in right, this aggressive trial in anything but a failure right now. Yeah. They are behind on levels. They're behind on farm. They haven't gotten the kills. And honestly, uh, all credit due to Misoku again, actually, because we mentioned he was like the most solid player in Arctic last time. Those nightmares have been crucial to deflate the pressure of this aggressive try. The whole point of this trial in is thunderclap into rocket barrage, and it hasn't actually happened ever. No, it, it has, they just haven't really been, the synergy, the, the coordination just hasn't really been happening there. But you get a nice little well, pull off here. Do best gonna get himself some gold, but I, yeah, this, this trial and I agree has not really been all that successful, but I think they're making up for it in the other lanes here. Definitely. The Magnus has a level advantage, the Queen of Pain has a level advantage, she's gotten, getting all the farm in the world. Uh, maybe we will see Mushi, uh, aggressive Queen of Pain, oh, I don't know. Happy at mid. Mag wants this kill and he's gonna get it. Skewer, Shockwave, just gets it. The Invis Rune actually gets popped as well by Smash. Great play by Tony Montana at mid lane and Definitely. it's that level advantage. The one, we, the, we missed them trading kills earlier on, but it was the Mag who got the kill first, which means he gets XP. He was mm -hmm. a full level ahead of that Batrider. Yeah, it's it's a huge deal. And Tony Montana, once again, we he was a lot quieter against EG just because, I mean, obviously it was a much stiffer matchup. But again, he's sort of looking really good. I think when he's on, he can really just anchor this team. And Magnus is a great anchor to float your team on. Yeah, and Batrider TP's back mid. He's level 5 up against a level 8 Mag now. Mag Gosh. with... Uh, looks like he's still not all that farmed. He's got bottle boots and a wand. So he's actually not all that farmed despite getting these kills. It's Queen mm -hmm. of Pain at bottom lane who's just really stealing the show as far as farm so, goes, though. I mean, also a two-level advantage. They're getting big-level advantages. Actually, Mystico... Rubik, he's gonna TP I like out. this TP. Yeah, he, he was dead if he didn't, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely the right move there. Mystico, I mean, he's a smart player. He's been in the scene for a while. Uh, I've actually seen him rotate around a few different Peruvian teams. In, in general, Peru Dodo, to me, seems like they have sort of a pool of... 20-ish solid sort of players, and they haven't quite found like the confirmation oh, that's perfect. Bad. He wanted that bottom Ooh. rune so bad. Queen of Pain's there waiting, takes the illusion rune, and Low now mana. I'm gonna get this kill. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he has the mana. There's no there's no there's no grip. Oh sorry, Lasu coming out from Bat Rider, and there is gonna be enough damage just to get the kill. In comes Luna, but the eclipse! Ouch. 
It's only a level 3 Lucent Beam, and, well, the Illusion Runes tank quite, uh, take at least one or two of those beams, and now the supports come in. Gyrocopter oh, support, no. man. That Rocket Barrage does some serious damage. Shockwave not going to reach the Rubick, unfortunately. Needs another Rocket so Barrage. Dubas, you dead. He's not so happening. dead. <laughs> Nightmare, no mana. Tossi should be able to get away from this one. He's got another disruption four or five seconds if he needs no it. No mana on the Bane. He's going to pop a s interesting little sound there. Bane's just got, they've got movement speed. That's all they need. No mm -hmm. boots on Shadow Demon, so he does get that. He does get the kill. Big place for Mystico, actually. Really doing very good cleanup there. He gets, he ends up getting three kills, right? Uh, I think two right there and one earlier. So good play to, to mop that up. I think Dubas, he did dive in a little too far. Um, yeah. He was instrumental to actually. The kill on Luna is a big deal, frankly, because it sets her a little farther back. And Ka didn't move from his spot during that entire time, which I actually really like, because they want to hit level 6 on this Brewmaster, and now they are substantially closer. Yeah, slight edge going the way of Aurox as far as X, X being gold, but still very early days here, so not really much separating the two teams. Uh -oh. and Smash. Oh my gosh, Smash again. Another mm -hmm. solo RP. They like these solo RPs on Batran. I think solo RPs early game is a really strong way to play this, but there's a return kill coming out from Misoku, the Bane. Comes in at the right time, gets himself a kill, and he's now level 6 with that. That's some good XP going his way. Definitely. Arctic are doing a great job of rotating supports to try to shore up these situations. But sometimes I feel like the situations they're getting into should be avoidable in the first place. Like Splash should have played a little quieter considering there were like three people right there. And the fact that Masoku does rotate, again, five out of six thing fights that this Bane is participating Here we in. go, Top. It's that level six. Lasso, there should be enough damage. There's no Lucent Beam. He could get a Primal Spit. No, he's not level 6. He was talking levels. about. He was just short of it. Counter TP's coming. It's Gyrocopter. It's Shadow Demon. They're both smoked up and Mag gonna come as well. He's got no RP, but I don't think he needs it. Just having Shockwave skewer damage should be enough. They won't catch him. Looks like that gets out of there, but there is still a Luna under the tower. Queen of Pain, more importantly. Solo kill bottom lane. DD Rune is there, and Queen of Pain with a quarter staff is looking for a fast, fast Orc in Malevolence. Orchid, uh, I think that, I think it will be good this game. It's not there's nobody that is absolutely just totally flipped from great to bad because yeah. of Orchid, but it's just damage. I mean, it's just you, they're treating this Queen of Pain like we used to see Empire treat Clinks, solo safe and just blows people the heck up in mid game. Yeah, it's it's just like get rid of that one escape cell. Darkseid can't surge, Bane can't nightmare away. You can go for all these little solo kills that otherwise wouldn't get. Even kills on Rubik. If he's going to telekinesis you and then survive, maybe still a blink, then you're not mm -hmm. going to kill him. But having an item like Orchid gives you such a strong solo kill potential. It's Absolutely. really a great item for that reason. And the fact that they've won these two lanes, just this bottom lane and mid lane, just means that there's so much less available for Arctic. Like, they're trading off every kill, and they might trade off kills in this fight that's coming up top, but they're just falling ever so slightly behind constantly because Orox are just... Have, I don't know, I just feel like they have a slightly more holistic approach. Like, it's not just about we want to win the fights or we want to draw the fights. It's about how does this fit into the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. And I think overall it's just coming together a little better for them. Yeah, they're making these better trade-offs. They can just recognize overall what is going to be better long-term. And getting this Queen of Pain, this really good early start is paying off for them. Luna, despite having some decent early game CS, is 0-1 right now. Has got those four assists, but is, I think, pretty, pretty solidly at. 1,200 gold behind the Queen of Pain in terms of total net worth. So I think things for Auroch are in a much better position. Now they're going for that smoke gang. They get their trailing going. They've got the level 6 on Brewmaster, and they feel pretty confident that they can take this fight at top lane, I think. Hmm. If I think if they TP somebody over, they definitely win it. 3 versus 3, this will be interesting. Yeah. There are no creeps to protect them from the Rocket Barrage, really. We will see a TP in. It's Mag coming in first. We're going to see a Brewmaster immediately ultimate. Sonic Wave actually stolen by Rubik. He drops it, but it's going to be Gyrocopter and Rubik who trade life. Disruption comes out. It's on Masoku. Bane should take a fall here. Luna, you just got to run here, I feel. You can't actually take this fight. Ooh. Why are you still He's in the done. neighborhood? And Bane actually still alive, but they can just change targets to this Luna. Oh, if no, they want. Courier. Courier, there's a grip. Fiend's grip almost brings down the Shadow Demon. Luna actually going to maybe try and turn this fight around. We'll bring down Shadow Demon. Now there's your grip. CA, the Brewmaster, gets gripped up. Brought down. Double kill for Luna. That's why he stood in fort. He knew what he was doing. Missile. That rider, you've got to run, you've got to run fast. It's going to be a rocket barrage coming in as well, and Mystico has respawned. That's the beauty of this long fight for Arctic. They're starting mm -hmm. to respawn, and Queen of Pain, nowhere to be seen. It's just well, not it doing right enough in the middle of it. It's just not enough damage. <laughs> yeah, as far as, no uh, as far as damage output, it's just not there. The Sonic Wave, no mana for it, and he came to the fight, just didn't have the damage output. He didn't have the That's the problem with Queen of Pain. You can have so much farm, but fighting into a 4-5-man fight is so difficult when they have disables. 
one lasso, telekinesis, fiend's grip, and you can die until you have that sort of first big tanking item up. Uh, yeah, I actually feel like Aurochs made a pretty significant execution error. They cycloned the Luna uh, moments before the Magnus RP'd. That would have been a Luna. Imagine Iwo doesn't live through that fight. Yeah. Like, they, there's no way that they can rotate people back in to win. And if they do people, rotate people back in, it'll be reminiscent of the EG game where they just fed one by one. But instead, they keep the Luna up. She improves to 4 1 and 4. That's basically the entirety of the BKB. In fact, she's 300 Bottom. away. They found Darkseid, though. Blink Scream finishes off the kill. Queen of Pain there. And Darkseid just caught out a bit there. I think he thought bottom lane was a lot more empty than it actually was. Mm -hmm. Hoping they could get some pressure on this T1 tower, especially with it down to pretty low. But his team are getting a nice little trade for top lane. Mm -hmm. They're going to look to snap pressuring this tier 2, and well, they've already got the tier 1, so things, things for Arctic, they've taken a nice little swing for them. There's actually a 2k gold lead all of a sudden. Absolutely. I mean, that last fight, on that extended, extended fight through which Luna just sits there, not really, without the RP, that just didn't have the damage for her. The thing about support gyrocopters, we see him, I feel like I see him so rarely these days that I forget that it's a support gyrocopter, and I'm like, oh, gyro's coming in, he's going to clean up with flak cannon. And then he just sort of doesn't, and I'm like, huh. <laughs> it's a bit under. This is a really it's a hard support gyrocopter. He's very underfarmed, yes. underleveled. Normally, at this point, it's a four position support. You never play it as your hard support. That's the Shadow Demon here. You'd be hoping to have wand, phase boots, maybe a bracer to start building towards your drum of endurance, but mm -hmm. we're not seeing any of that. Definitely. And actually, uh, Arctic really want a kill off on Sima, and I think they can get it. I mean, Masoko, like I said, he's got yeah. this Fiend's grip, and they have a lift to go off of it. Sima might go over aggressive here. Yeah, this aggro is going to cost him. Telekinesis grip, easy, easy pick off. And the rotation, three man rotation was coming from his teammates. They just weren't there in time. I think that's partly why he got so confident because he's like, well, yeah. my team are coming. If anything goes wrong, they can be there back to back me up. But they, they brought him down so damn fast. They're going to take this fight anyways. There, buyback or anything from Queen of Pain doesn't look like it's going to be needed. Surge nice. from the Bane, not going to matter because there's a mag RP on two. Rubik and Bane both take a fall. Disruption going to try to secure the kill on Darks here. Three hero sweep. Orox. They, I mean, I think Arctic. They just like got too excited by a Queen of Pain kill there. Mm -hmm. They thought that they could push in a lot, lot more than they could, and decent rotation here actually, and the tower deny. But I have to say, uh, Tony Montana completely carrying that actually. Uh, the flat cannon was about to miss, and he skewers and RPs two people, both of whom were not in the flat cannon radius, into taking both hits of the flak, which is of course a dramatic slow and good, excellent disruption there yeah. as well. The Invisory would have let him escape. I mean, Mac bakes himself up another kill. Now, he's 7-2-2. Two two. Tony Montana needs to be careful, though. Luna's on the chase. BKB is there. Just a level 1 Eclipse, though, so not really enough damage. Ooh. No Fiend's Grip as well for another 30-plus seconds. So He's got to be wiping sweat off his brow. He's so close to Blink, and that would have pushed him so far away from yeah, him. He's, he does not want to be getting caught out just now. And Tony Montana, like you say, really nice pick-off on the bat right at the top lane. And Shadow Demon was the one leading things off. The Purge followed up by the, by the Disruption, and... They get themselves another kill, Aurochs, and this is what they needed after a bad fight or two. Definitely. They were I was honestly thinking that they were coming a tiny bit apart at the seams, but very good turnaround there, just taking advantage of that overextension from Arctic. And I think they're looking good again. The level situation is quite in their favor, in my opinion, because they it's not even that they're so far ahead on XP, it's that critical level one ult to level two ult juncture that they've cleared on both the Queen of Pain and the Magnus. Two people with very consequential ults. Well, we're going to see another tower go down this time, bottom lane. So T1 tower once again going to Mystico. Rubik gets himself his second tower of the game, and it looks hmm. like they're hanging around bottom lane. They've got three here. No Blink Dagger on, on Batrider. This is going to be a lot harder to do than you'd hope for. And I I mean, Brewmaster can just pop the ultimate if he really wants. Yeah. He's not going to do so. He's okay. He just walks his way out of there. Clap gets stolen by Rubik, and well, Brewmaster would love to get a Blink Dagger of his own. Now, if you talk about the Blink on Mag, I think Brewmaster just is essential to have a Blink up. Sure, no question about it. Um, I do want to talk about one more person that I think I'm going to get Blink. Now that they have 1330, they're actually about to get that magical 1337 gold on Rubik, uh, I think they might want to keep Mystico a little safer and get him a Blink. Yeah. Because like I said earlier, a mobile Rubik can just steal spells like a fiend. Like, it becomes so much easier. Especially against the mag. Yeah. Oh, Mystico. Ah, he's doing a lot of damage here with that clap, and he steals Rocket Barrage! Wow. What a play! He's going to get nice. brought down, but that was so nice. That was really, really nice, regardless. Was, yeah, no doubt. He claps and good. then immediately seals Rocket Barrage. And he just, he basically did three nukes in like less than a second there and just mm -hmm. completely obliterated that gyrocopter. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no doubt about it. I mean, Dubas barely, with support from the substantial support from the Magnus, manages to actually trade that off. But that's good because if they are going for Blink Dagger on, on Mystico, he would have been very close to it if he had survived that. Yeah, it de- definitely will help help things out. As uh, Jarocopter not going to be too happy with his fate, but. <laughs> At this point, he's like, well, I'm just kind of feeding. Yeah, this is a soy sauce gyrocopter. Actually, he has phase boots, so that's not nothing. I thought he was still stuck on tier ones, but that's something. That's not it's bad. No magic one yet. I guess he's got enough gold for one, but we'll, I imagine we see a drum of endurance just for the stats, or we'll see a straight BKB. He just needs something to mm-hmm. give him some survivability. 758 HP, 58 HP is just not really cutting it right now. No, absolutely not. Uh... I mean, I don't know. I feel like Oroch's still probably feeling fairly confident just because during all these fights, Iowa's farm is good, but it's not fantastic. It's not even measuring up to where where Seema on the Queen of Pain is at. He's got the BKB. I guess probably we'll just go straight into Manta next, or at least the Yasha. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I think at least the Yasha and then probably to see a full Manta is okay. I think Queen of Pain has sort of been slowing down a lot. I actually went for a kill recently on the Darkseid, but Darkseid's like, okay, I can just TP out. That's the one limitation of having this Orchid going for solo kills. If your opponents are fast, they can just TP the hell out of there right away. And you've got Absolutely. nothing to cancel as a Queen of Pain, so... I mean, this Queen of Pain hasn't really blown out the game the way that I think you and I thought when she had such a great start. Yeah. I mean, Simo was doing amazingly, but he's just 4-1-0. Out of 14 kills that Orcs have had, he's only actually participated in four, and he's going to cop a death again. Well, let me see... Death at bottom lane and oh, Ooh, maybe not. Possibly, possibly not. But meanwhile, mid lane, right, no, they, yeah. they're gonna catch out. But they're gonna catch out the uh, the Darkseid. So they trade Darkseid for Queen of Pain, although not really. The two, the two really unrelated events, we should be saying. <laughs> uh, really. Yeah, I don't think that was a conscious trade no. of we'll give up Queen of Pain. I honestly think that that favors Arctic as well. Ooh, top lane because Mag wants Mystico. Is there mm-hmm. no screw for ten seconds here? Because it looks like he's gonna try to chase this one down. Empower Axie Storm and Mag's got the movement speed. Three huh. seconds to skewer. I, I I guess he's just waiting for a blink skewer. No, he's going to RP. Oh, he is going to RP. This is fine, I think. Why yeah, not? I, there's no, no real eminent team fights. RP with such a short cooldown. This is what I think is rock, the main problem with Mag, is that you can do stuff like that. If you're an Enigma, using an, a black hole for a solo kill, you have to think uh, about that, because it's got a three-minute cooldown. With hey. Mag, it's like, hey, no problem. Sure. Sorry, I was freaking out about the courier that was traveling completely into no man's land. They even <laughs> pinged it. Uh, like, Arak saw it with this ward here, but Arctic did manage to turn it around. Right, the good ship, war dog. Uh, no, I, I totally agree with you. When you say the problem, you mean the problem from, like, an overall balance perspective, yeah. right? Yeah, I think when you have a skill which is designed for, like, controlling and dominating team fights that can just be used for solo kills one versus one. all the time. Yeah. I, I actually agree. I think RP would be... I think he would be still a very strong hero, even if it did zero. Like, it could do negative damage. It could heal the players it hits, and it would still be amazing. And he would be more of a 5 versus 5 specialist, rather than, hey, I win 1 versus 1s, I win 2 versus 2s, I win 2 versus 3s, etc, etc. Well, I think going to sneak a Roshan here. I like this little bit of play here, and it looks like Aurochs have no idea what's up. They also feel slightly safer, knowing the RP is on cooldown. Yeah. I imagine probably gave him a little incentive to go in here, but I think Oryx actually just don't know that Roshan's going yeah. on right now. It's the vision. They only know what's going on, basically, on this third-ish of the map, whereas Arctic, I, I much prefer the sort of band across the middle that lets them sort of understand what's going on, who's transferring where, and consequently, oh. where can they put the Batrider? There's Batrider looking for a kill. He's going to go blinking in, but not going to find anything just yet. Gyrocopter has picked up an Ogre Club here, giving him some extra survivability, and... Well, Arctic, they're behind by a couple of kills here, but they're playing like they're the ones ahead. They're getting really <laughs> aggressive, and I think a lot of it's come down to Queen of Pain just being very shut out of this game, just as a hero. Until you have a yeah. BKB, you can't really offer a whole lot. Mag at top lane can offer a lot when RP's not on cooldown, but that, that, that wasn't the case of that mid lane push. Yeah, I mean, Arctic, it's, it's tough to push into them if you're Aurox, because really they have nothing special as far as push. In fact, they basically have nothing, so they can't just split push. Like, Queen of Pain is not the world's greatest split pusher. She can clear out a creep wave, but she does fairly anemic damage to towers, and nobody else really does either. So Arctic can afford to play on the other side of the map, and they're the team that wants to do that. I mean, Bane, Batrider, these can get in there and pick off one or two players. Yeah, I, I, like, I like this decision from them, but they're going to be careful here. They're going to get... Nice there, was blink. A, there was a silence, but immediate blink away. That's another another potential weak point of having this this silence. They can blink out if you don't do some damage there before you actually silence them. As Queen of Pain is mm-hmm. coming coming towards the mid lane, but quickly fighting, they can't really ac- accomplish a whole lot. Even with the mm-hmm. blink daggers up on Brewmaster as well as Mag. 
Yeah, I mean, SEMA, they can just get, if they get a big RP and then Sonic Wave on top of it, that's just, it's trivially good. Like, you know that that's good. The problem is, it's so hard for them to actually effectively initiate, despite having one of the, the world's best initiators in Magnus. Because Arctic have no joke of initiation as well. Bane by himself is not an initiator per se, because he lacks the speed. But just add Darkseer, and suddenly Bane can just scoot on in there and Fiends grip your Bane. Yeah, it, it seems Speeds like... Speeds your Magnus, sorry, that's what I meant. It seems like a really nice little sort of bit of synergy that we can see this Arctic team look to use in these future fights, but right now, they've got to get to this mid-T1 fast, because it's going down, and it's going to be glyphed up. That Rider drops a flame break there. It's going to be a blink in from Mystico. He has finished off that blink dagger, but immediate blink out didn't actually do any damage to prevent the Mid-air blink, blink there. Yeah. Some parkour coming out of I feel like he was, he was still thrown up in the air with the telekinesis when he blinked out. <laughs> Uh-oh. Luna. Gonna be looking to get a kill here. In fact, they does have this Aegis, so there's no real danger in this. And it's actually Shadow Demon who is completely caught in No Man's Land. He gets brought down. Easy little pick off there, but T1 Trap time for Queen of Pain at top, so... <laughs> Good trade. I, it was actually midair. I just realized why. It's because um, the telekinesis disable on its initial target yeah. ends. It, yeah. So that's why he was able to do that. Okay. Uh, Matrix style <laughs> jump out. Radiant Queen of Pain going to be start TPing back now. Still no BKB, about six, seven hundred gold short of that one. So they'll be fighting without him. Mag, going to be the one getting jumped on. Can they bring him down oh. before an NERP? There's a grip on yes. Mag. Mag goes down. No buyback. Brewmaster drops a split here, but this fight already going to be so difficult without a Mag RP. The chase is now on. Darkseer pops a mech in Arctic. I think they just turn around, take this fight. Luna, unfortunately, is still up in the air, but at least a T2 tower can be claimed. He's still got Aegis. It's, it's really difficult to fight for Oryx without this Mag, and Brewmaster Ultimate expires, and that was a level 2 Ultimate, which accomplished nothing at all. It, it actually accomplished, I would say it accomplished a negative amount because he cycloned Arctic, uh, sorry, he cycloned Iwo through both hits of the call down. Iwo ends up walking away from this fight without even bothering to pop a BKB because he didn't need to because he was actually stuck in a cyclone the entire time and he was like, you know what? I am surprisingly okay with this because he avoided the entire dangerous part of the fight. Also, uh, I mean, big shout-outs to Mystico once again. For, like, the the third or fourth time today, he's looking like the best player on Arctic. Because, like, that Fiend's grip on Magnus was just so, so clutch. Yeah, it really was. And, well, the former Gamers University Peru team, Arctic, are looking really good here against Aurox, who we both sort of, somewhat, somewhat predict as the favorites. And, well, they find themselves another grab. This time there will be defensive disruption. Mag with an RP. This is the kind of fight they need. But BKB from Luna is there to block a lot of this damage. Great timing coming out. Iowa, the man, oh. the dark seat wall with the, a vacuum gets perfect initiation. Four heroes down on Oryx side. Two good to buy back. Queen of Pain as well as Gyrocopter. And this fight just gone horribly wrong for the Raiders. Still an RP, too. And, I mean, oh. The turnaround on the RP, like I said, I mean, the Blink Dagger on Mystico is a big deal. Double kill for Quap, but I mean, they paid so many... They've paid in blood for every single one of these Luna kills, still has an Aegis? I mean, that's kind I of, know. like, not really ideal, because that Aegis is going to expire. You're kind of wish, like, why could they not, like, kill Luna? Luna respawns, kills some more people, and instead of Rubik dying or something, but... Exactly. That was... Oh, Queen of Pain. It's eh, well, yeah, at this point, it's just an Aegis. If that. He's, he's quite mean, happy to lose it. He doesn't even yeah. care. <laughs> he's like, no, no, please. Please go ahead and kill me. Yeah. And it was... They killed four Radiant Heroes, two bought back. And that's a great fight for the Dire team. Although it didn't sort of... The end result did, maybe didn't look like it, but that, that to me looked like a good fight for them. How much gold did they cost? This is the thing that we can't see with our fancy dancy uh, spectator doodads is like how much gold has been lost by a team. You can see gold earned, yeah. you can see net worth, and the net worth falls. And I mean, actually, we can kind of see it in the net worth graph. Look how much Queen of Pain and Magnus are kind of suffering relative to this Luna because they're just paying so much for these buybacks. The cooldown doesn't matter yet, but the sheer money does matter. They need more on this Quap. She still doesn't have BKB. I think she has it now. The good still. news is they're killing the Darks here and they're killing the Batrider. Batrider just no force stuff yet. Darkseer's got his mech but doesn't have anything on top of that. He's actually building an Ag Scepter which is an interesting little choice here. We hmm. expected something a bit more standard but Ag Scepter right off the bat from, from the Darkseer or at least having a point booster for the time being for some stats. Uh, I don't I'm not sure if I buy what the what he's selling here. Like the Ag Scepter for whom precisely? Like yeah. the, the Brewmaster? The Gyrocopter? Neither of these guys are doing very well. No, it's it really doesn't doesn't feel like it, and I, it's bonus damage. I guess the actual raw stats and survivability in Ag's office is good. Sure. But you can get that from you can get that from a Vanguard. I think a Vanguard is a perfectly fine option in this game here. Yeah. 
You can go for the pipe to help deal with the AO. I mean, there's a lot of AoE damage from Queen of Pain, Mag, Gyrocopter cooldown. Mm -hmm. Pipe would help. I wouldn't even mind the like, yeah, like pipe or even like blink or something. Yeah. I don't think would be bad. Yeah, well, we'll see the push once again coming down this bottom lane. This time there is going to be 3k gold on Luna with the Manta BKB. Luna actually not in the fight yet, so it doesn't look like they're going to be overly committing to this. It's just Rubik and Darkseid at bottom lane for the time being. Mid lane, they need to be a bit careful. He's just picked up a gem, so they're looking for map control Arctic. Definitely. I wish I think is smart. They want to preserve that map control if they can. Quick Orchid getting thrown out. I think this might finally be tier 1. Oh, no, maybe not. Queen of Pain. Is there a grip? They're going to need one on Queen of Pain. BKB is used, but I don't know if they've got any damage to actually kill Queen of Pain. Not the best grip. An immediate boulder tot. Queen of Pain, Sonic Wave brings down Rubik. Really nicely played by Brewmaster this fight. And in the background's Luna. Trying to do some damage here with the Eclipse. Has managed to bring down one, it looks like. Gyrocopter the first to take a fall. Bat Bane does go down. Gem on the ground. Can they deal with that? Brewmaster? Nope. Not going to deal with the gem. Batrider picks it up, and Brewmaster going to take a fall. So once again, Arctic... They sort of bounce back from a fight, even though it didn't look too good from the start. They managed to sort of make the best of that. Mm, I mean, Orox were playing so deep, and with only really two heroes, two or three heroes that can actually go that deep, because Gyrocopter and Shadow Demon, they'll never make it there. Like, they will not make it past the Tier 1 tower to the Tier 2 tower behind the Tier 2 tower. So they got split up, and then Arctic sort of had the correct way to deal with it, which was Luna takes the easy to kill people, and Darkseer and Batrider and Bane just try to kite the hard to kill people. And Masoko, again, I mean, he stayed alive for so long. He didn't actually do that much in that fight, but he preoccupied uh, Sima and... Who's on the Brewmaster? Uh, CA for so long, making sure that they couldn't deal with the Luna at all. Yeah, this Brewmaster's not had a good game. He, he microed that fight pretty well. Immediate boulder toss yeah. onto the Fiend's grip. And he, he bought space for the Queen of Pain, but like you say, they were just getting sort of tweed around with and kited in that fight. They weren't really achieving a whole lot. A two for two trade, and end of the day, it's Arctic Iowa who's getting really farmed on this loan. He's now up to sort of 15.5k net worth. He's going to be picking up a butterfly, I imagine, next. Maybe we see a Satanic or Helm of the Dominator first to give him some mm. sort of extra life still, but whatever it I'd may like be, he's going to have it soon. I would actually like to see Butterfly more than Satanic, I think. I don't think their problem has been that he just has lots of incoming damage and needs to deal with it. If anything, it's just clear as many people out as you, as you want. Seema in trouble again. Another big Fiend's grip. They don't have a stun here. Oh, and they brought him down. They will see Masuku maybe get brought back down in revenge, but hey, Bane for the yeah. Queen of Pain, no problem. And here comes Rubik. Rubik's showing up. He steals clap, drops her immediately, going on to the Joke. Defensive disruption will keep him alive a bit longer. Mystico needs to find an escape path, and he's not going to do so. The Rubik entry into that fight, I think, was somewhat questionable. But the initial play, I mean, Queen of Pain for Bane. <laughs> Who wouldn't take that trade? Yeah. This this Queen of Pain is uh, level 18, BKB Orchid. T take that trade any day of the week. You think that if they have this pocket, like, if this guy loves playing Queen of Pain so much that he has it as his avatar, I just haven't really seen anything that impressive from the, the Queen of Pain play. Right from the beginning, they gave it the, the side lane solo, clink style, but we didn't get clink style ganking at all. Yeah, it's a hero that just has not had the impact that you need to be having in this game. You compare it to someone like the Luna, 9, 1, and 7, who didn't have an easiest of lane, was in that trial lane versus trial lane, although Arctic did sort of come out on top of that trial, and it wasn't a case where Luna was getting all the farm in the world. It was Queen of Pain dominating the CS, but now it's Luna dominating these mid-game team fights, and, well, we're seeing Butterfly in 100 gold. He's got it now. Uh, does he have the other pieces? Yeah. No, oh, yes, he does. sitting wow. there waiting at Korea. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really, really hard to deal with. Only a perfect RP combination will actually help them there. And even then, God, I don't know. <laughs> if he manages to yeah. just BKB at the beginning of a fight, they can RP him and it won't matter because right now all of their damage, what? and I do mean all of it, is magic. Here come the Desperation Complexity style smoke ganks. They go right into Rubik. Rubik blinks out of there. The smoke gank fall. They will see a Brewmaster ultimate blink in. This is perfect coming out of Aurochs. The Queen of Pain ultimate doing a lot of damage. They brought down two already, but Gyrocopter takes a ball, and here comes the return fire from the Luna with a butterfly with a perfectly placed Eclipse, and Queen of Pain just says, I gotta get the hell out of here. <laughs> and who can blame him, right? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, you can get these perfect sort of timing of skills coming out from the Radiant team, but they're killing maybe two heroes, and then, well, Arctic say, well, you're not killing Luna ever. As long as Luna's alive, we can get kills in return, and they do just that. 
Yeah, for it to have been a perfect RP, I would have really loved to see them catch the Luna in it, which unfortunately yeah. they didn't. And even just Eclipse, that's the thing about the Rashawn pit. It's like the ideal Eclipse testing environment, unless you have an illusion hero or a pet hero. Because ev you know every last hit will land on a hero, and Eclipse, it does a tremendous amount of damage if you can guarantee that every last hit will hit. Mag actually had a, once again, we, we missed the refresher up on Mag, he actually had it that fight, used it, didn't get the second RP off though. That's too bad. That's actually what happened last time he got a refresher. This is the thing about Mag Refresher. Um, it's very, very strong, but it uses up every last point of mana he has. So if anything happens to that, if he, sort of, if he even has to re-empower uh, or anybody drains his mana a tiny bit. For instance, if Bane gets one tick of Fiend's Grip off on the Mag before being interrupted, that means that when you refresh, you won't have the mana. Yeah, it's... Really tricky. You do get to use the arcane boots a second time once you refresh, yep. but it's what six hundred even yeah nine seventy five yeah nine seventy five yeah. mana total you needed. So you, you use your first RP, your arcanes refresh arcanes again, then you can use your second RP. But it's very very close and and hard and hard mathematically to be using two RPs. Absolutely. In a fight. Not to mention you're not even including the fact that you probably had to blink and skewer too. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's so close. You need other people to also time the arcane boots for you. It's just, it's so tricky, and anything can go wrong with it. It's, it's very, very delicate. And Blink Skewer, in some ways, can be just as crucial for these fights, or even just mm -hmm. after RP, using RP, using a skewer can be very, very important from a positional point of view. So, Mag is going to be having those mana problems. We'll have to see if he gets some, any sort of an item to deal with them. Once he gets some more levels, he'll get the intelligence growth as well as more stat points. So it'll evolve itself a little bit, which I think will be yeah. mostly how he, how he... He's not going to look to go for another side of ice or a casual energy <laughs> booster or anything. But No, but but I definitely it would be helpful for him to start picking up yeah. a, little, a little bit of stats. He will have, I mean, he'll have the RP for the next fight as well. But again, it's just, it's very, very delicate. He needs at least maybe one more level before this even becomes vaguely comfortable. It's hard in the middle of a team fight to remember, oh, right, I need two arcanes twice. Like, you're thinking, oh, right, I gotta hit blink, gotta hit RP, then maybe skewer, then shockwave. You're not thinking, oh, and then I micromanage my arcane boots. I mean, it's just yeah. difficult. It's difficult. Well, well, I think it looks like they're maybe gonna be the ones looking for a smoke gang soon. They grouped up near their tier two tower. Luna is coming as well. Luna, Crystallis. Forget mm -hmm. lifesteal, pure damage it is, and I I like this build. I think I like it's it. fantastic. You know, lifesteal is okay. I mean lifesteal is good, but just go for the pure damage. The one thing which could sort of cause him issues is, as you said, going to be the mag RP. But he's been so good with his positioning so far in this game. So it's, why stop? And now? also lifesteal, it won't do you a whit of good if you die within the yeah. seven seconds of RP. Yeah, no, fully agree. I, I think yeah. I think you're totally right. Life steal would actually be more close to meaningless in this game. And they go. I think they, they, they're going. Though. They've got ages, so they're just going to go mid. Yeah. So Luna says, yep. "Got two lives. Let's smoke up. Maybe we get a pick off as well. And if we get a pick off, we go high ground. Even if we don't, we probably go high ground as well with this ages." Mm -hmm. I honestly, I don't know. I have to say, Arctic. We talked at the beginning of the game how it seemed like Orox were just had a slightly more coherent plan, but that plan came apart when the Queen of Pain sort of the other shoe didn't drop on the Queen of Pain. Like, they needed that to sort of generate mid-game advantage, and at this point, they find themselves with a no-carry lineup. Yeah, they're going to be finding themselves really on the back foot here for having a tough job defending. Mags will go for an RP, but he's not going to get one bat right. Where's your defensive disruption? Mag RP just on one, only catches the Loon. Loon is still got Aegis, though, and is Mag going to get Stolen RP. Down? Stolen RP. Gyrocopter gets crit to pieces. Two crits come out of Luna. Queen of Pain does get one. No, Queen of Pain gets nothing. Queen of Pain was in the fray with a BKB up, doing as much damage as possible, but achieves very, very little, and Age is still there. This is just like zero damage inflicted by Aurox. Mm -hmm. They just don't have what it takes. I mean, even just the pipe at this point is just completely deflecting them, because they really, they only have sort of one go in them. Straight tier fours. They're not messing around Arctic. They feel <laughs> confident they can get this game, and they're going to find the Queen of Pain kill as well. Queen of Pain doesn't, does have buyback, Yes, Barely. but I I don't think it really matters at this point. Nobody we'll, else does. We will Magnus see it. Does. Shadow Demon respawns, but oh, bat. They're going to kill Queen of Pain again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> mm, that is Just too much mobility from Arctic in the long run. And the, the, the Rubik Blink was no joke this game. Uh, both of the supports, actually, Mystico and Masoku, are having great games. Fantastic play from Smash. Early on, he seemed to be feeding a little more than he necessarily needed to, but he made for up for that with great initiations later on. How many times was a lassoed Queen of Pain dragged to her death yeah. in the second half of this game? I think 
Just about all of his deaths, actually. This bat rider had a really... It started off slow, was... Uh, oh, started off really slow, got solo killed by the mag a number of times. It really looked like this was going to be another great Tony Montana game, but bat rider redeemed himself in a big way, so... Arctic are going to advance to the next phase of the We Play Dota 2 tournament. Unfortunately for Oryx, they fall down to third place in the group, which is not enough to advance. Sad days for your mm -hmm. uh, Ukrainian Dota 2 fans. Although there's some other Empire as well as Navi, both uh, oh, in, yeah. the, in the next phase. And this is, I believe, the only South American team advancing to phase two. I think there were only two or maybe three South American teams yeah. in the group phase. There I were these guys, uh, Isaris who uh, I think they actually disbanded, so maybe it's for the best that they didn't advance. And um, I think Payne or Menix were in a group as well. I think Payne got in a group and got knocked out. I remember casting right. Isaris. They definitely got knocked out. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, they de <laughs> They definitely got knocked out. I say because I, I know not, nothing against their skill. Just like I know that Absolute Legends definitely got knocked out. They were in the group of death, which was like Empire, Mouse Sports... Absolute yes. Legends and Icy Cup, and it was a scary-looking group. Absolutely. Compared to our group today, at least. Mm. This was before the big AL like resurgence, now yeah. that they're like actually playing a lot better. Anyway, I don't know. I feel like Aurox, uh, definitely a less impressive play this time. I just don't know. I honestly feel like it was more of a strategic failure. Like I, I praise them for the fact that they stick to strategies, but maybe the strategy that they chose to stick to this time wasn't as robust as they'd like. That Luna just getting enough farm to get that early BKB just stuffed any hope of the Queen of Pain just going over the top, I feel like. And so Arctic, uh, big plays, frankly, is yeah. what lifted them. And I think the offensive trial line just not working out for Oryx. It was yeah. a weird, a weird trial line to begin with, and then they it just was. didn't execute very well. Luna got big, Queen of Pain couldn't find space. You needed to have Gyrocopter not feeding so much as well as, well, Shadow Demon and the, the Brewmaster just couldn't find openings that game. So all said and done, that concludes everything for today. I believe we finished too late to catch the last Star Ladder games. I may have to check out the VODs or replays for them, unfortunately. But hey, right. that's life. We got to cast some cool games here in the We Play Dota 2 tournament. Good. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, Vic, Vic is or Vikramont has been my co-caster for the entire day of We Play Dota 2 action. You can find him on Twitter, twitter.com slash Vikramont. I'm BTS Gods on Twitter. Um, all these VODs, of course, will be uploaded on our Beyond the Summit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Beyond the Summit TV. And we'll have a rebroadcast coming out as we normally do, which will be the G1 League match from earlier today, LGD China against Rattlesnake, followed by all five best of ones from the We Play Dota 2. So big thanks everyone for tuning in. Any last words, shout-outs, I don't know, sure. words of wisdom? Oh, well, I mean, I'd just like to thank everybody for watching. These were some cool games, especially the EG versus Orox game. I thought yeah. it was really high quality. Uh, thanks, Gods, for having me on. And uh, like God said, you can check me out, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, uh, me.com if you want. And uh, actually, if people want to hear more of my casting, I am continuing to do the uh, Netalik Pro League as well. So you can check that out later tonight in about three and a half hours. You're not anyway, sleeping thanks, at all, are you? You, you went from Netalik Asia to we play to Netalik America. Yes, I I may take like an hour long nap, but I don't know. I'm not super into the whole sleep okay. uh, thing. Thanks, guys. No problem. We'll definitely check out the Natolik stream later on for the American uh, American portion of that. But eh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for joining me. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Well, as I said, we'll have our rebroadcast coming up soon. Big thanks to We Play Dota Two for those of you guys who still want to grab a ticket for Phase Two. You still can do so. Of course, we've got Navi. Empire, Liquid, etc., etc. All these good teams. EG as well as Arctic now playing. So for the, you guys who are now fans of Arctic, grab yourself a We Play Dota 2 TV ticket. But we'll be back tomorrow with more We Play Dota 2 action where we'll grab ourselves into Group X. I don't know what group we're in, but we're in some other group which has, I believe, Team... I don't even know anymore. I don't know. Some team for We Play tomorrow. We also have G1 <laughs> League action, but G1 League action tomorrow. We've got IG versus zenith so that is really kind of like your your match to watch tomorrow night which is at 7 30 p.m singapore time 4 30 a.m pst 7 30 p.m eastern standard time for you americans definitely don't miss that one ig versus zenith will be tomorrow i believe i'll be casting that one although i'm not 100 sure um so thanks everyone for tuning in and uh, we'll be back with well a rebroadcast shortly and more live action tomorrow see you guys